Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comms, and welcome to the 2 meter amateur conversion of the 100 watt GE Orion VHF FM transceiver. If you saw my other videos on the GE Orion series, you would know that I have a VHF and a UHF versions of these radios. I paid uh, $35 for both of them with accessories. The UHF variant was already operating in the 440 to 470 megahertz range so it didn't require any conversion. The VHF however is a 150 to 174 megahertz range and we're going to need to do some work to the radio in order to get it into the 2 meter amateur band. Before we get started we're going to talk about how important it is to back up your radio's data and using the radio maint program that's in your software package in programmer 17 you can back up your tracking data your radio code your feature string which is also known as feature encryption and the personality of course you can archive in programmer itself but it's extremely important in case you brain dead your radio and you have it to lab it back to life having this stuff backed up is going to make your life much easier. Okay, this is a very simple conversion, so put your soldering iron away. This is going to be uh, the list of tools and equipment that are going to help you on your fun-filled project. The first is going to be the radio itself. Uh, the next will be software, programming software. The version of software we're going to use in this video here is Programmer Revision 17. A computer, which is just a Windows PC with a DB9 connection, and I'm currently using Windows XP Service Pack 2 as an operating system. A programming cable, if you look up here, you'll look at the card to my video that I made last week that teaches you how to make your own programming cable. And next will be an SC4 file, and we're going to talk in depth about that in a second, and I'm going to teach you how to roll your own and a T20 Torx driver to open up the radio, a multimeter or DC voltmeter of some kind, a tuning tool or precision screwdriver. This is what I use for a tuning tool. It's just a slotted screwdriver with an insulated handle and these are handy. Uh, failing having one of these, you could certainly use a precision screwdriver. And you will need a dummy load with a coax jumper because spraying your neighborhood with random RF just isn't cool. Now that we have that out of the way, we can begin. Our first task is to manipulate the software to allow out of operating range frequencies to be entered and programmed into the radio. And the use of special code allows such. The tool we're going to use to accomplish this is the use of what's called an SC4 file. A SC4 file is, is, is just a simple ASCII 2 text file and I'm going to show you how to make your own. And all you're doing is is you're moving the lowest frequency down 6 megahertz. So 144 megahertz will be entered as 150 or 146.520 would be entered as 152.520. So essentially after the installation of that file when you enter in the frequencies as specified, the software itself is allowing you to enter the frequencies because it's seeing them with being in the operating range of the radio and allowing you to write it to the radio bypassing whatever error checking is involved and allowing the radio to function at those new frequencies software wise. This is our SC4 file and there's nothing to it. All it is is a text file that's saved with a SC4 extension and you can see that everything below this line is essentially the text you'll put in the file to affect this particular process that we're working on here in steering our radio 6 megahertz below the operating range in order to facilitate coverage of the amateur band. So essentially you take 144 for 144 megahertz and then have six decimal places after that and then do a decimal to hexadecimal conversion and come up with the hex character 08954400 and then enter those in as two digit strings in this fashion here and they repeat themselves three times and then saving the file with an SC4 extension. Okay we've created our SC4 file. What we're going to do is we're going to save it and let's call it 144 dot sc4 and we want to save it personality folder of our Macom software and this is where we'll save it as right in here and you can see here that we now have 144 as our sc4 file open up our software now to steer your software to using that sc4 file go to tools 
options, enable SC4 files, okay. Then you're going to go underneath on your personality side here, and you see general options, and it's going to say SC4 file name. Now what you're going to do is, is you're going to look in your personality folder, and you'll find your SC4 file that you created, and it's steered towards it, and then you're good to go. Okay, now you take your personality, let's build our personality, and you can see I've already done one here, and it's important to remember that any frequency that you enter into your box here is going to end up being 6 megahertz below what's entered in the box. This is merely a way for the system itself to take those frequencies and allow them to be programmed into the radio. So you can see that what I've done is, is like for the frequency 144025, which I just have it in the name column, is a frequency of 150.250 megahertz. So what I'm going to do is, is I've stepped through and done every 250 kilohertz for our next phase, which is to get the synthesizer to lock. And this isn't entirely necessary, but it's a good way to test the entire range moving forward. It's just important to remember that it's always going to be, the frequency is going to be entered 6 megahertz above the desired frequency henceforth. And you're going to be working entirely out of what you're working with in the computer. If you take the file and read it out of the radio and then modify it, it's not going to work. You end up having to use this personality file henceforth and do your modifications to this and then upload it to your radio as needed. Go ahead and save it. And then go ahead and write it to the radio. And that's all there is to it. Well, we can see now our radio is in this nasty little fail loop here because the VCO won't lock. So now we have to address that issue. And the way we do that is by actually doing some hardware modifications to the radio. Now we're moving on to our second task, which is the actual hardware modification of the radio. And all we're doing is, is we're getting the synthesizer to lock. The synthesizer, it makes the RF. The radio does have a transmit voltage controlled oscillator and receive voltage controlled oscillator or VCO. And whenever you take the radio out of band, what's happening is is the voltages that control those oscillators fall out of tolerance and need to be adjusted back into tolerance. And this is gonna to, going to cause that shift in frequencies. So essentially our coverage in the radio that by moving it down 6 megahertz, we're going to lose 6 megahertz at the top end of the voltage or the frequency range of the radio, excuse me. And our desired voltage range that we're going to measure at test point 201 is 3.5 to 7.5 volts DC. Your mileage may vary. And we're going to adjust variable resistor 240 and variable resistor 280. This is what we're working with here, taking your radio on the side where your model number and identification label is. Go ahead and remove these four screws with your T20 bit. After loosening all four screws, remove this cover. This is what you're going to be working with here. You can see this is your receive VCO adjustment. This is your transmit VCO adjustment. And in here is a pad that you can't see. The first thing we have to do is get our VCO to lock in the first place. And we're not going to be able to get reliable voltage readings from this with the thing constantly resetting itself. So what we do is just allow the radio will continue to reset itself. We get into our, we put our tuning wand here onto our receive VCO and we just start adjusting it until we get a lock. and we have a lock. Okay, now that we've got our lock good, we can go ahead and see what our voltage is by measuring off of our test point. We can see we're at 2.7 volts. So what we're going to want to do is, is we're going to want to adjust our voltage to be a little higher than that. And you can see we're going up. We'll bring that up to about 3.5 volts. So 
see how much further we can get it. Because we want to be in a window to where it's not going to... Okay, so there we go. We're at three and a half volts now, and that's at the bottom end of the ham band. Now we'll adjust our transmit VCO, because as you can see, when we transmit into the service monitor, it's doing the same thing as before. So we need to adjust the transmit VCO now. And now you can see we're locked in now. So the VCO in these is segmented somewhat. So you need to go through and have a variety of different test frequencies in here to see if they lock on. And we're well within the lock range for the radio. And as you step through the frequencies, you can see it as we go back down. While doing the transmit VCO, what I'll try to do is, is I will try to balance the voltages between the receive. As you can see, our receive VCO at this point is just under 4 volts. And under transmit, it's 3.2 volts. So what I'll do is, is I will actually go in here and I will adjust my VCO so the voltages are the same. And we're at 3968, 3968. And after our modification, this is the performance on transmit and the amateur band. We're about 105, 106 watts. And our deviation level is 4.17 kilohertz. So we're looking good on that end. Receiver performance is quite good too. Uh, the specification calls for 12 dB of Synad at 0.35 microvolts. And as you can see here at 0.35 microvolts, we are at 20 dB of Synad. And as we turn it down here, we'll get it down to 12. So we're pretty close to 12 right there. And we're at about 25 microvolts of sensitivity. So that's good. When you save a radio and lab it to your will, you're helping make the world a better place. I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comms. Till next time.